Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. In this video, we're going to go over DMM's new DYN4 DYN4 cable that connects to the DYN4 AC servo drive. We've got one right here. And the other end, we call this a flying lead cable because it's got a connector on one end and just flying leads on the other. And this end goes to Acorn. Now there's been some confusion on the Centroid Acorn user forums as to which schematic to use. If you use DMM's cable, and this is part number CA-CUACRN-M4-05. That's the part number for their cable. And I recommend that you buy this cable if you're wiring up Acorn to a DYN4 servo amplifier. It just makes things so much easier because you don't have to fool around with the DB25 connector. DMM's already done that work for you. I think it's money well spent. Your time is worth something and it helps eliminate any mistakes in soldering this cable or these wires to the DB25 connector. If you use DMM's cable, then you follow DMM's schematic. Okay, that's right here. Shows you how to hook it up. And that's what we're going to do today. I've already got it hooked up. I've already got it working. I want to show you the connections to Acorn. It's very simple. And then we're going to look at the wizard for Dyn4. So let's get over to the bench and take a look at how this thing's wired up. Here's the DB25 end of the cable that connects to the DB25 connector on Dyn4. Now I've already got a motor wired up using the cables, the motor cable and the encoder cable that came from DMM technology. So the motor's connected to power, the encoder is connected to the encoder cable, and then up here on Dyn4, the encoder is plugged in and the motor is plugged in. Now I'm not going to go over this. I'm just powering up this Dyn4 for demonstration purposes. You want to follow the DMM instructions for wiring up Dyn4, getting power to it. So here's the DB25 end of it. Here's the flying leads from the cable. And what we've got here, this orange wire is going to input 5. IN5. This is the drive fault. If you have three or four Dyn 4s or two Dyn 4s, all the orange wires will go to input 5. This is fault. So if any one of the drives fault, it will close this input. Input 5 must be set to normally open in the wizard. All right, next over we have this is input 5, this is input 5, 6, 7, and 8. We don't have anything on there. But then this one here is 24 volts. You'll look over here, you'll see I have the 24 volt jumper to 24 volts on the input. This 24 volt terminal and this 24 volt terminal are tied together. So on this 24 volt supply terminal, I have the red and the brown wire connected. So the next one over, this is axis one, this is step. Step is the green wire. So ST1 is green wire, direction, is the blue wire, enable is the yellow wire, and common is the black wire. So to recap, input the orange is on input 5, the brown and the red are on 24 volt supply, the green is on step, the blue is on direction, the yellow is on enable, and the black is on common. That's it. That's all there is to it. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my DB25 right into the Dyn4 servo drive. That's ready. I'm going to go ahead and power everything up now so I can demonstrate this for you. Now let's go to the screen. I'm going to go ahead and start the wizard. Now you are going to select the Dyn2, Dyn4 selection. You select that, all right? And it will pre-populate everything for a, for a Dyn4 drive. There are two exceptions here. What you need to do is under Drive OK, this is version 4.1.2 of the software. 
Centroid is aware of this and they're going to make a change in the future revision. But for drive OK, you want to set it to normally open. That's the way the Dyne 4 drives work. And if you have several drives, you're going to parallel the input. Like I told you, on input 5, you're going to put all the uh, drive fault, which is the orange wire, under input 5. So that any one of them, if there's a servo fault, the drive will close it and you'll have a fault. Now if you need to see which one is faulted, you'll go, you open your cabinet, you will look at this LED right here. Not sure if you can see it, but this one is not faulted and it's in a green state so it's good to go. If it's faulted, there'll be a flashing red LED in that window. So that would be your faulted drive. And to reset these drives, you have to remove power from them. How you set that up is up to you, whether you use an e-stop relay, which is the preferred method or however, but you have to remove power from the drives to reset them. So keep that in mind. When you hit the radio button for DIN, Dyne 2 and Dyne 4, it will set this to normally closed. You want to set that to normally open. And then under advanced access configuration, you want to check the enable box. It needs to be inverted. If you don't do that, then when you power up the Dyne 4, the motor shaft will be locked. Okay, and then when you try and use it, the software is going to unlock it so you'll get no movement. So make sure you check the enable box. Those are the only two things that you got to do. The rest of it will be pretty much taken care of for you. This demo was just to show you what it takes to use the cable provided by DMM Technologies. Use the cable, use their schematic. So let's take a quick peek. When you're done with all this, you write the settings to CNC control configuration. Yes. This is also assuming that you've already used the DMM drive uh, software to set up your drive and your motor. Okay. So that you bench test that first using their software. Now let's go ahead and start up CNC 12 and see if we got motion. Okay, it's ready to go. I'll go ahead and set home just to zero out the DRO. I'm going to press cycle start. As it says right here, machine home not set. Jog all access to their home positions. Press cycle start. So I hit cycle start. Machine home is set. I only have one axis set up here and I'm hitting the jog buttons. It's in the slow mode. Motor's turning, and to turn it even faster, I can hit the tortoise and the hare. That takes it out of slow and puts it in fast. That's a rapid jog. Set up my max rate, 500 inches per minute. I'll take you down to the motor, and I'll jog it. So it works great. I've already done a video on wiring a Dyne 4 drive to Acorn using a standard DB25 breakout board. I used a breakout board just to demonstrate connecting it. The difference between this cable and wiring it using the centroid schematic is that Dyne 4 requires both a 24 volt and a 5 volt uh, input. In this connector they've put a dropping resistor to drop the voltage down to 5 volts so it's already done for you and you can hook directly to 24 volts. You'll recall when I showed you this wired the brown and the red was wired to 24 volts. I hope this um, clears up some confusion. Again, if you purchase this cable from DMM Technologies going from Dyne Ford Acorn, use their schematic. If you are wiring your own DB25, then you use the 5 volts. You see this yellow line here is going to those two pins and that, that yellow line is going to 5 volts from the power supply. That's it for this video. Thanks for visiting me in the shop and uh, good luck on your projects.